Hi there everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Nimbus here, another episode of Magic 2015. So for Friday Night Magic this week, I will be playing, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm going to be playing a White Weenie Soldier Synergy deck, so uh, packed it, jam, jam packed it full of, of soldier creatures, and hopefully we can get some good matches out of this. So, drop a planes, and we should also drop Anakaraz and Squire. God's sake, uh, I was like, suddenly started up this duel and then remembered that I was actually supposed to, um, what's the word I'm looking for, yeah, started up this duel and then was like, oh crap, I'm actually supposed to be recording, aren't I, whoops a daisy, let's uh, get on with this, so we will now be playing the Wall of Omens after I've attacked because I don't have any land apparently, yeah, with this, with this deck I either seem to get no land at all or so much land that I get mana flooded, it's really bizarre, even though I've only got like 20, I've been mana flooded more times than I care to think. See if we can get a mana. Nope, we're gonna get a Paragon of New Dawns. Okay, so he's playing a Cultivate, so maybe we're playing some kind of ramp deck here. Oops, he didn't mean to be hovering over there, I was looking at my phone. Had the wife text me. Put out the bins, it's bin day. Okay, I will. Oh, come on. Have I got no mana? This is, this is gonna be a mana screwed game, isn't it? This is what you have to get when you only have 20 mana in your deck. You, it's really weird, like I either get completely mana flooded or like this game where I'm totally mana screwed. So I'm just going to be waiting to draw into a planes at this point. As soon as I draw into one, I've got two Crusader of Odricks, I've got standing troops and a Hall of Triumph to play, so pretty much like game over him. Although he's now playing doubling season, which is not particularly good. If an effect would put one or more tokens onto the battlefield under your control, uh, oh, come on, you're joking. Three, all three of my inspired charges. I do not want my inspired charges. I want something that will start generating soldiers or brrr. This is frustrating. As a, as a first game, you don't want to get mana screwed. Uh, I've got a toss away card. Let's throw one of my inspired charges. Probably the least useful of all the cards I've got in my hand right now. Yeah, I've purposely got only 20 mana because it's a, it's a single mana deck and I'm curving out quite low as well. But then you get these weird situations where, uh, what have we got here then? A Sharding Sphinx. Not particularly good. So he, whenever he can attack, whenever he attacks into me, he can basically, um, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is what I wanted to see. Uh, so what do we go for first? I mean, I could go for a Crusader of Odric or do I go for a Hall of Triumph? Um, if I go for a Hall of Triumph, that'll only get pumped up to a 3-3, three, three, so... Hmm. Might have to go for a Crusader, maybe? Skip my attack, because no point in swinging in. Uh, yeah, let's go for a Crusader this turn. So I could have done with this land, like, two or three turns ago. Because if I got, like, more of this land, this wouldn't be quite so scary. Another Sharding Sphinx? Bloody hell. I'm pretty much doomed, then, if he's got the doubling season down. Because he's going to be generating four Thopped coat tokens every turn. Yeah, I'm, I'm done for. And the girl going to be flying as well. So that's pretty much game over. I just... Mana screw, didn't draw out fast enough. Not good at all. Yeah, so see what I mean? He gets two... Four Thopped tokens every turn. I cut And these will generate Thopped tokens as well. Uh, I don't think I can win from here somehow, so I'm probably just going to concede, and I'll see you in game number two, guys. Okay, guys, here we are for game number two, and I don't think I could really keep this with only one mana as much as I'd like to. Uh, that is much better, as I've got the two Wall of Omens and the two planes to start off with, so I think that's a bit better to start off with. Just repeating myself, as per usual. So some kind of red, red blue deck at the moment. I've got two Banisher Priests, which is quite nice. Nice to draw into another mana here. Excellent! Look at that. That's much better. That's what I want my deck to do. Be nice to me like that. Wouldn't mind getting up to six mana to get Captain of the Watchdown. Pretty tasty card. Gives all your soldier token. Give all your soldier creatures um, vigilance and uh, plus one plus one, which is pretty crazy. I think we'll play a, another Wall of Omens here. This will just skip combat. There we go. Look at that. Now we've played another Wall of Omens. 
don't want, don't really want to play the Crusader Roderick this turn. I'd rather draw another card, see if we can pull out another mana. I'm also going to leave Vanguard, so yeah, why the hell not? Let's play you as well. And that's just going to get shocked. Okay, fair enough. So at least I've drawn out a shock now, I suppose. One of them down. Don't really mind losing an Elite Vanguard. And we've got a Goblin Rabble Master. Okay, interesting. Some kind of rush deck, maybe? If it's red blue, but that's not really going to do much. I'm just going to block it like so. Might play one of my Banish Priests on that just to get rid of the uh, Rabble Master. Oh, the Attended Knight's even better, actually, because it's got First Strike. So we're just going to skip combat. Obviously, we can't swing it anyway. Let's play the Attended Knight. No point playing a Banished Priest if I don't have to. There we go. So I can actually kill off his Goblin Rabble Master without worrying about losing my Attended Knight, unless he can shock it somehow, which would make me very, very sad. No shock at the moment. We've got a young Pyromancer then. So it looks like we've got some kind of red-blue token deck, maybe? Interesting, interesting. This is going to generate another Goblin. Not the end of the world. They're going to swing in like so. So I might have to banish a Priest to that this turn. I was hoping that he might swing in, but apparently he's not that stupid. See what else he does. So nothing. Okay, oh, very nice. And a Kras and Squire as well. So we are going to play Banisher Priest here, I think. Yeah, let's play Banish Priest. Pre-combat, so I can swing in with the Attended Knight. So let's get rid of the Goblin Rabble Master. Then we shall swing in with both of these. Don't care if he blocks with either... Uh, don't care if he blocks with the Young Pyromancer, which he probably won't. So I'm just going to do three... Deal, deal three damage, like so. Very nice. So one more mana, and I've got the Paragon of New Dawns, which will be awesome. Because that way, when I start blocking these little goblin creatures, I can kill them off with my walls. So got Krenko's Command as well. So he's going to be spawning lots and lots of uh, teeny tiny creatures. So swinging with the 2-1. Uh, maybe, maybe not, he says. Still want that extra mana for the Paragon of New Dawns, but, uh, so, do I swing in here? There's probably not much point, so I'm just going to skip my attack, and then I think we shall play a Crusader, which will be a really big creature. 6-6, six, six, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Did used to like these kind of, uh, this is kind of a deck similar to the old... Um, what's it called? It was like the human kind of one on the previous version of Duels. Um, I've got a reprisal just to be on the safe side. Could do with that extra land, but I'm not going to complain at the moment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, I'm tempted to swing in with the six, six and just watch him like nuke all of his creatures, but see what he does. I mean, I wouldn't care if he did that. I would actually quite happily sacrifice my Crusader just to nuke all of his creatures, although. Is he going to do that? One, two, three, four. He's had to sacrifice everything to kill it, including the young Pyromancer, which would be fine by me. Why would you do that? Like, seriously. All you needed to... It's not got Trample. All he needed to do is block it with one creature. But all he's doing is literally sacrificing four tokens. That is, like, the dumbest... Oh, and he's going to coordinate assault. Fair enough. That's fair enough. I... I I was, I was about to say, like, why would you do that with four creatures? Like, I actually see that as quite a good sacrifice. I've got rid of four of his tokens for one of my creatures. So, and I can then play two of Kras and Squires as well. And then next turn, I can start swinging in with my Tended Knight, which will get pumped up. And it's got First Strike as well. Paragon of New Dawns would be even better if I could get a, uh, another land down. Biden of Thessia, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Oh, come on, I really need that mana. So this will get pumped up to a 4-4. Four, four. 
yeah, that, 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 that's, a, that's, a, that's a good trade. And that way he will actually kill off all of these without get, taking any damage himself. So that's why I'm doing that there. See what he does. Let's go let it go through, I'm guessing. Which he did. Okay. So I've, I'm keeping the Banished Priest just to be on the safe side. In case he's... Because uh, he's got blue in his deck, I'm assuming that he might have a... Um, what's the one that gets pumped up plus one plus one every time it, you draw they you draw a card i can't remember what it's called but like the shore stalker or something like that so he's not doing anything at the moment which is kind of weird i would love to get six mana to get my cats in the watch but that's not happening anytime soon ah oh, excellent here we go play oh so creatures your opponent controls attack this turn of able fine Gonna drop a paragon of new dawns down. Ha <laughs> ha! But you weren't expecting that. Uh, he suddenly got a whole world of hurt coming his way. He probably thought, "Oh, that's a really clever idea," and then I just dropped down a plus one, plus one there. He he shouldn't have done that until I'd finished playing what I was going to play, really, because he can play that at any point. So he's just kind of really shot himself in the foot, in my opinion. It's like he probably didn't realise that I was about to play that like massive... He's just not blocked. He suddenly realised he's made a horrible mistake. Fantastic. <laughs> I'll see you in a sec for game number three. Nope, he's not dead. Fair enough. I thought I had enough damage there to finish him off, but uh, nope, apparently not. But he probably made, he probably realised he made a horrible mistake there the moment he did it. He was like, oh god, what have I done? He's probably thinking, oh yeah, I can kill off some of his tokens, his little... GG, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's probably like, oh yeah, kill off some of his tokens, kill off some of his, like, my Banisher Priest, stuff like that. And then he's like, oh, I've made a horrible mistake. A horrible, horrible mistake. So he's going to nullify that. Eh, whatever. Never mind. We'll just go through the combat and attack with everything, I think. Got to push through his damage. Come on. This has got to be GG now, surely. Unless he's got something else up his sleeve, which I am not expecting. What else have we got? We've got a Quickling. That'll block another creature. But he's got to sacrifice one of his own. Okay, fair enough. There we go. So he's, that's, a, that's a win. I'll see you in a sec for game number three. Okay, guys. So here we are for game number three. And... Oh, I can't really keep that hand. It's got no kind of early game, whereas this one is perfect. Three mana, so we've got the Hall of Triumph, Wall of Omens, and Raise the Alarm, so pretty good. And then one more mana, and we've got Paragon of New Dawns as well, so yeah, that's definitely worth keeping. And we've also got Standing Troops, so even better. So I'm thinking Life Gain deck for playing Blue, Black, Green. It's usually a fairly... So we'll drop the second land, and I think we'll drop the Wall of Omens here. Let's draw into some more cards. Why the hell not? We've also got the Attended Knight to be pumped up by everything. So, oh my god, this is looking awesome so far. This is, like, fantastic. Lots and lots of cards to play. The only thing I could really do with is one more mana for the Paragon, but no hurry. Cultivate, so ramping up pretty quick. Man, I've got, I've got to speed up here. I'm going to get swamped otherwise. Ooh, very nice. Got the planes here, so... So I'm going to play the one across and Squire, and then we'll probably play a Raise the Alarm at the end of his turn. Just to see how it goes. What have we got here then? A Wall of Omens of his own. Fair enough. Anything else? Any more for any more? Drop down the Razor Alarm as well. Surprise, Mother. Mother Screwer. I'm not going to swear. I'll be good. Drop down another mana. We, we shall now drop down the Hall of Triumph. Or do we drop down the... No, let's drop down the Paragon of New Dawns. It kind of uses up my mana slightly better, I suppose. Although, pff, it's never really a good time. But, uh... So that... Yeah. Yeah, let's drop down the Hall of Triumph, I suppose. Yeah, let's do that. 
slightly more consistent card. Let's go for white. So we'll deal four damage. It's better than really swinging with one one creature and get, getting the what's it called? Um, getting the exalted bonus from the attendant, uh, the Akrazen Squire, because I was guaranteed four damage as opposed to none. So he's got another wall. Fair enough. So he's attempting to drop down the attended knights. What else is he dropping? It's really good gatekeepers. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely a life gain deck. So he's just gained a ton of life. So we are going to drop down in a second. So I'm not going to swing because he can kill off any of my creatures now. So I'll skip my attack. We'll drop down the attended knight. And we'll drop down a Wall of Omens as well. There we go, and we'll draw a card. Oh, very nice, another mana. I never say no to too much mana. For example, if I was to get a uh, Captain of the Watch, I'd be able to drop that next turn. And a Rune Scar Demon, which is particularly terrifying, as I've got no way of dealing with that right now. So, yeah, this could be not so fun for me this game we do have an inspired charge though which is quite good so do I play this now that would take up four and mana and what would it do so just thinking in terms of how, what would it kill basically I mean it could kill off his rune scar demon or do I save it till next turn thinking saving it till next turn maybe and playing the paragon instead maybe yeah. And then just going for like a massive swing at his face next turn with the inspired charge. That might be the only way I'm going to get out of this. Skip my attack. Play the Paragon. Nice to have to tank the damage from the, uh, what's it called? Rune Scar Demon for now. So yeah, he's just going to swing at that, which I can't do anything about. At least it won't be in play next turn. So that'll be tapped. What else has he got? So we've got another rune scar. Oh, fantastic. Another rune scar demon. It's exactly what I wanted. So we do have an elite vanguard. Not particularly useful. Uh, how much damage will I do? So he's got four creatures in play. So I'm going to do three, six, nine, twelve. I say, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, just trying to think here. Can I actually win this? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, three, six, nine, twelve, sixteen. So for, say for example, he decides to just not block anything. Just crazily, apart from with maybe the walls, I could potentially win here. So I'm just going to go balls to the wall here and swing it. Hope, hope he thinks that I've got absolutely nothing and this is like kind of a Hail Mary. See if he blocks. He's going to block one thing. Two things. Three things. Four things. Just going to inspire charge here. Just because I don't think I've got much other choice. Okay, so killed off a few things. He's still got his two rune scar demons, so not particularly good for me. But he would, in theory, have to save both because if unless he's got any, anything else, any kind of he's got no life gain or anything like that. So he's going to swing him with both of these. Okay, fair enough. So I go down to two. Suffer the past. Oh, so I'm about to... Yes, I've got three cards in my graveyard, so that's me dead. Okay, guys, so I thought I'd do one more game just because... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just because I didn't really want to leave it on a sour note, so I'm going to try and win this one. This is actually a really good hand to start off on. I've got the Crusader of Odric, and that, that synergized up with the Brimaz as well, so really, I should win this one, but I, I'm going to say that now. What we've got, a Foundry Street Denizen, fair enough. Not really too bothered by you. 
So yeah, three mana is like the perfect amount of all of these. So, and we've got even more. So fantastic. Let's get my attack no points swinging it in. What he's going to do is just kill it off with the Foundry Street Denizen. So it looks like I'm probably playing some kind of red goblin deck. Yeah, I'm playing a red goblin deck, which is probably one of the... So we've got mono red versus mono white for the final one. So he's going to shock that. Fine. See if I care. So that's a pretty terrifying card. Quest for the Goblin Lord, but... Uh... So what does it give you again? So... As long as Quest for the Goblin Lord has five more counts on it, creatures you control get plus two zero. That's actually kind of hilarious because I've got a first strike creature. Um, oh, and very nice Hall of Triumph as well. Um, so we're going to play the Brimaz here to start off with. Um, yeah, because I've got a first strike creature in the Attendant Knight, all of these goblins basically only have one health. So I can literally just go around picking off like a goblin at a time. So he's playing a goblin arsonist. So how many quest counters does it need? Five. Okay, fair enough. So I've got to try and win before he gets too many quest counters down. Is he going to shock me? I feel as though he's going to shock me, but... Uh, no, I can't do that. No. He's going to shock me. I can't do that. Can't do that. That, that was dirty. Oh, very nice. We've got another Crusader of Odric, but this turn I think we're going to... Do I swing? Uh, I don't like it. I know I know he's got a shock there, which is why I'm like, oh god, you dirty, dirty man. Just get more creatures down that I don't care about throwing away. Let's see what he does this turn. Is he gonna swing this turn? He's Ran out of goblins already, maybe. Which is interesting. He has got the shock. See, this is what I was worried about. Oh, why are you shocking? Is he double shocking my Brimaz? Oh, no. No, you can't double shock my Brimaz. At least that's three shocks down. Well, that was kind of sad for me, but... Uh, so I think we're going to play the Hall of Triumph here. I'll play Crusader Roderick next turn. Now, I could swing in here, which I probably will. So he does. It's got first strike, so uh, he's only got one shock left, and I doubt that's his last card somehow. I do have the two Crusaders of Odrix. I don't believe he managed to kill off my Brimaz there. I'm well sad. Two shocks. He had, like... And we've got a Goblin Shortcutter here. So what does that do again? Target creature can't block this turn. Okay, interesting. So it's actually out of cards now, so it makes me slightly happier. So I will take three damage this turn, but whatever. Whatever. Would love to have my Brimaz back, but uh, not the end of the world. I can actually play my two Crusaders of Odric this turn. Yeah, we'll swing in with the first strike creature again, and then play my two Crusaders. Just to show that I've actually, you know, got something cool that he doesn't. Two five fives to come down. Ha ha! Suck on that. How'd you like them apples? And all he got was a mana. Wow, sucks to be him. And we got a reprisal as well, so just just in case we could reprisal one of his pumped up creatures, which is uh, not looking very likely to happen here. So he's going to have to block, otherwise he's dead. Very, very dead. So he's going to kill off one of my crusaders, so... Don't know which one, don't know which one I want to kill off first, really. So goodbye, uh, one of my Crusaders, but he's really quite doomed right now, only having zero cards and nothing on the board. So yeah, Goblin Arsonist kills off my Crusader. So yeah, at least I managed to uh, take on a Goblin deck, which makes me slightly happier. 
I think the only creature that might get him out of this would be like a Rabble Master or something like that. But no, all he got was a land, so that's GG. Yay, we ended on a win. Two for two today. Uh, two, two out of two, two, two out of four today, so 50-50. Let's go have a look at the deck. <laughs> He's no good against Weenie, yeah. That's the one, one problem with Goblin. So I'll see you in a sec for the deck, guys. Okay, guys, so uh, let's take a quick look at the deck. So first of all, we've got three kind of little weenie elite vanguard uh, soldiers just to synergize up with everything else. And it's just like an early game drop as well. We've got an Akrasen Squire, gives the Exalted bonus, and it's just a nice cheap creature. Wall of Omens for some of that early card draw. Reprisal for dealing with any big threats that we can't deal with with our pumped up weenies. Raise the Alarm for drawing lots and lots of uh, weenie soldier tokens. A Brimaz just because it is a soldier. And it's just an amazing card. I include it in pretty much every white deck I can, just because it's just amazing. I, I, I don't get how this card is so good for three mana. Like, this is like a really high quality card. It doesn't cost a hell of a lot. I think the only kind of thing is you need like two uh, white mana, so it can sometimes be a problem in multicolored decks. Mentor of the Meek. Didn't see this come up today, but it's great in this deck, just because um, I don't think I've actually seen this come up the entire time I've played this deck, but it's just great for drawing cards when you're summoning all your little small creatures. Banish a Priest for dealing with any big threats by banishing them away. Uh, Crusader of Odric, nice card, which gets pumped up quite highly by all the weenies you got on the board. Tended Knight generates a token and is just a really good threat being first strike itself. Standing Troops, another soldier which has Vigilance. Pag of New Dawns for pumping up all your white creatures. Inspired Charge for doing, doing those huge attacks. Captain the Watch, if you can get up to that much mana, it's probably the most expensive card in the deck. So, uh, got two of these. Uh, yeah, so it's like literally the most expensive thing. If you can get up to this much mana, it's pretty crazy. So, it summons three 2-2 two, two soldiers, because all of them will get plus one, plus one, and every single one of them, including the Captain the Watch, has Vigilance, which is... Oh, Awesome. And finally, because we're playing a mono deck, it's always great to have a Hall of Triumph as well, which will pump up a colour of your choice. Like I was bemoaning, I've got 20 lands, so for such a low curving out deck, with like the most being like at 3 mana, I've only got 20 mana, and it's a single colour deck as well, so I thought I could get away with it. It's amazing how many times I've been mana flooded playing with this deck as well, it's really quite silly. But yeah, so we had some... Uh, mild success for this today which is quite nice so i will round off the episode here um as always guys don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode apart from that thanks for watching and i'll see you next time goodbye